Oh, thank you. Okay, so today <clears throat> we're going to be talking about walls protect us from the bad and from the good and freedom from bondage of self and more because y'all know how this podcast is y'all know it gets conversational we'll start at one thing and we'll end up talking about monsters inc and stuff like that okay so with us we have a special guest oh my gosh y'all we love special guests we have dominique with us dominique out of the plethora of things that you are i do know you know you're also a relationship ex ex the relationship expert um i want you to tell also just tell us a little bit more about like what you do and what you're doing because i know you've got a non-profit coming up so let's share a little before we get into the topics well what's going on yeah for sure so again my name is dominique caminos um my background comes from professional and personal development um so i have worked with k-12 education um, challenging the transformation beyond leadership culture and academic improvements i've done diversity equity and inclusion work i've worked for relationship intelligence companies also a relationship coach for intimate couples. Um, so overall, the common denominator there is relationships and our differences and how we can kind of navigate the space of life, which the pillar is relationships, right? And, yes. and look at ourselves in a mirror. Yes. Tell us about this nonprofit that you got coming up. Oh yeah, the future. So um, <laughs> that being said, I, I realize, you know, working in the corporate space and organizations, I think is a great thing and necessary and I still do it. Um, however, I decided to go get my master's in um, clinical mental health. Yeah, yes. This, because we have to understand to cultivate change no matter where we are, it starts with us and also starts with understanding the the development of others okay mm-hmm. so anyways with that being said i was able to partner up with a private practice here yeah. um and we recognize the gaps when it comes to mental here, health here here as in where oh i'm sorry yes in austin what? however austin, we're not limited into where we offer services we have remote uh counselors we can travel for trainings and developments etc now can people dm you if they have any questions about this and how to get plugged in of course of course yeah because your instagram will be in the folks y'all know the instagram will be in the episode description below yes please 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 reach out to me um, our, our focus is really helping organizations, schools, and individuals fill those gaps, right? Um, so a lot of times we do diversity, equity, inclusion trainings, team trainings, whatever, but we're not really diagnosing what's really going on there, right? And so we want to be able to create a true treatment plan that cultivates actual change, diagnose the true issues, while also implementing and providing the tools you need to execute on those. Um, In addition to that, our biggest passion project currently is creating affordable mental health clinics for everybody. So depending on your status, what's going on, maybe you don't have insurance, um, you have a need, we are here to fill that gap. Also, if you are looking to become a counselor, if you're in school um, and you were a minority, part of a marginalized groups, we would like to help sponsor or provide some t- sort of paid internship, et cetera, uh, to ensure that you achieve your clinical hours and get a license. Exclamation mark. <laughs> yes. And like I said, um, your Instagram handle will be in the episode description below so that yes. folks can and will um, reach out and find out more. 
Mm-hmm. Nice. And you don't have to be in Austin. Remember, we serve anywhere. Right. That's beautiful. That's because this is the thing. Once I start, if I ever start accepting money for the podcast, because I don't, um, I purposely don't get paid or want to get paid. I have it set to where I don't get paid for a podcast. I just don't. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. I. I don't know. I. 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 I just don't. I know why. Um, because I don't have. A, I hate money. People know that. I, I hate money. I hate that we need it to survive. It's just anyways. But um, I feel like it. It'll. At least for me, I don't want it to take away from the true meaning of this podcast and the true reason why I started. You know. Um, Um, not saying money would do that but it's just like if I ever do lose passion for the podcast I'm not that doesn't mean I'm gonna stop doing it but it's like if I ever do lose passion for the podcast I don't want money to be the reason why Mm. Mm -mm. no money will I mm -mm. I'm not letting money already costs a lot Mm -hmm. of humanity just Mm -hmm. as a whole um but you know um if I do end up doing that in the future, you know, um, part of the season three update, I mentioned, you know, 100%, I'm not even joking, 100% of the money um, from sponsors or from just the podcast in general will literally be given to folks who cannot afford mental health treatment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that's something I'm really passionate about. That's something that I think churches should do with tithe money. Tithe money, I think, you know, there's just a lot of... There's a lot of mental health neglect, and mental health should be a priority, not a privilege. Yeah, and the dilemma is privilege is that key term. Um, what is privilege, and who usually has privilege? right and what does that all entail if you don't have insurance or you're paying out of pocket that's a lot of money Um, and usually the people that cannot afford it are the ones who have these discrepancies these social systems against them so in reality is it's creating a vicious cycle that has Mm -hmm. been created for us to (laughs) keep navigating in the agenda you Mm -hmm. know our worldly agenda exactly exactly Yes, and the big corporations that help corrupt our just finances as a nation, they know what, they, they, a lot of them, they know what they're doing. It's a lot of things are unfortunately all about money. Yeah, it's, but you know what? Um, it, it, it's unfortunate, but as a person who has passion for others, also we have to establish that the work that you're doing is great right but you're also taking time and we all have legacies to bring and actually the first time in history the generation after us that is a marginalized groups per se will actually experience privilege for the first time ever right and it's because we have opportunities like this to accept money we have opportunities to get sponsors we have opportunities to get grants there's so much out there that allows us to do more we can have a greater outreach we can create legacy that has not been provided for us so they want us to think though about money the way that um it's you know this scarcity this like survival mentality but in reality is it's what creates the the barriers of the systemic oppression that's been in place. So I really challenge you to turn this. I don't I don't know your whole business model, but turn this into a nonprofit that focuses on X Y Z and get paid for the good work that you're doing because this is bigger than you. You know, and you have you get to control the agenda. They don't. You get to control it. Mm. Glory. You need your own podcast, uh, Dominique. That's going to happen in the future. (laughs) Okay. So going to walls protect from the bad and the good. Mm -hmm. You know, what about that stood out to you? Like, what does that all mean to you? Yeah, what's the why? 
So my why, I was a child that endured abuse from childhood all the way up till honestly my mid twenties. Um, so it was kind of like this cycle and teaching emotional intelligence, what it means to protect self was not really, um, something I grew up with. Right. right. And the concept of walls and barriers, mm-hmm. it had a negative feeling for me. I, it was like, what do you mean? Like, who wants to live this way? Right. right? But as I got an odor, as I've healed, as I explore what emotional intelligence looks like, I actually realized that it's essential for us to have those walls, those barriers, those boundaries for us to receive and achieve the things that we want to achieve. Yes. Yes. Something that... Um... I thought of when um, Holy Spirit gave me these um, discussion, you know, topics to jot down, Mm -hmm. you know, is that word protect, Mm -hmm. you know, protect um, can be, you know, a word, um, when I think of protect, how about this, for me, you know, I'm thinking that there is or is a potential uh, threat or harm in some way, shape, or form, and now you need to be protected to stop or hinder, you know, something that is coming to harm you. You know, so does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So, yes, walls protect from the bad, yes, but they also protect from the good (laughs) you know it's just like you know the good you know what if that's not a threat you know what if we just perceive it as a threat because we're so used to the bad I'm talking me you know um but that's just something interesting about you know when walls no longer served me walls in certain areas no longer served me you know um it was like I wasn't allowing great men to love me mm-hmm. because I was used to the bad. And so I'm just like, okay, I'm in protection mode. The walls are up. You know what I mean? Um, yes, it blocks out the bad, but it can also block out the good. So like, I was just like learning to um, discerningly let those walls down, you know, um, but not letting them down immediately. You know what I mean? Like taking a taking it a time, you know, while I'm learning the person, you know, um, I don't know, there came a point where, you know, I had to like just having walls up as hard as rock, um, it just was no longer serving me in, anymore because as I heal was healing and moved out of those um harmful environments, you know, um and into these healthy environments you know it started blocking those it started protecting me from the good as well Mm -hmm. you know um what are your thoughts on that yeah so i kind of have a unique perspective on walls um i hear and understand what you're saying i think the dilemma is we go from zero to 100 right we state that wall and protection um, can limit us from growth in reality is if you're a spiritual person the number one thing to protect is your heart okay Mm -hmm. and walls don't always have to be a lack of um allowance uh Mm -hmm. from a specific person or a thing that could hurt us a wall can be a boundary that's universal you and Mm -hmm. i can have an intimate relationship and unfortunately this is a hard no for me Mm -hmm. And I expect for you as a person that's in my personal space that I've allowed in there to respect that wall. Right. Right? And so sometimes there's guilt behind boundaries because sometimes we see boundaries as um, a negative, a negative thing to, to, keep us in a shell right to not be vulnerable and 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 that's not that's not the case i think everybody should know who know who they are 
what's your boundaries? What are things that make you uncomfortable? What do you like? What do you not like? And be able to establish that for you so you know your hard no's and your hard yes. And just because you have those hard no's does not mean you are you are guarding yourself from good. Right. It, it, it means that you are aware, self-aware, you have respect for yourself, and you're transparent with that wall, right? So you can acknowledge, you can, you can um, be vulnerable, you can speak, and it doesn't have to change that boundary that you have in place. The question is, is it a healthy boundary or is it not? Is it a healthy wall or is it not? So being able to have that awareness and that discernment is everything. But you don't have to go from, oh, you're guarded, which means you're blocking your blessings. Now you're gonna have to look at your guard and say why, and maybe we need to tweak it. Maybe we can practice like, okay, these are hard no's and this is why. Okay, that's 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 fine. That's fine, but is it is it hindering your growth? Mm. That's the whole concept. Wow, okay, I knew you were gonna come with the wisdom. <laughs> I already knew it, I already knew it. I Okay, that's why, that's why I say, I don't want to hear none to a little to none of um, what someone wants to say on the podcast because I want to be so in the dark, you know, just like the audience is. So that's why, like, pretty much, like, before the episode records, obviously, I, you know, talk to people a little bit and say you know like we we like talk and discuss okay what um topics are you interested in and then we narrow it down you know um, even though you all told me for this topic um anyways oh (laughs) (laughs) but um (laughs) but um yes But it's like, there's a lot of things that I don't want to know going into it because I want to be just as like in the dark as the listeners um, because I want to learn. I want to like bring the authentic raw reaction to learn because I never really saw um, at all boundaries and walls like you just said it. Mm -hmm. You know, whether I've done that in the past now that I think about it, done that in the past or not, you know, I never saw it that way. So Mm. I'm so glad that you had said that, that unique perspective. That's the thing, I get excited when people say unique perspectives. I was like, oh, I'm about to learn something. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I mean, there's so much shame in, in protecting ourselves. There's either shame or extreme behaviors, right? And the reality is we should, you are a treasure. Right. Your heart, your mind, your soul, your body, all of that is a treasure. And what do you do for to get treasure? Is it easy access? Right. You have to dig for that. So anybody that in your world, you have to dig for the treasure. You are a treasure. So there's nothing wrong with being guarded in that chest. There's nothing wrong with establishing clear boundaries. The question that you have to propose yourself though, is it hindering my growth? Is it negatively impacting my relationships in a way that is not uh, productive or effective for me and them, right? right? So if, if it's something that protects your, all of us have triggers. And one of the biggest, uh, paradigm shifts I've had was understanding that my triggers will forever be here right Right. my responsibility is to acknowledge them is to bring out tools in my toolbox and get the tools for one to navigate my triggers but guess what they're gonna always be there right right and because of these triggers and protecting them I have to know what's gonna trigger my trigger right and I have to let people know that I value and care about or I'm interacting with it. This is something I don't like. Right? Right. Uh-oh, it froze. Let me call Dominique. 
while I do that, folks, I'm gonna go ahead and stall. Okay, what y'all doing today? How y'all doing today? Y'all doing okay? We love it. We love it. We love it. But no, like, she, ooh, something that she said. What is going to trigger the trigger? Hey, just get back on. Yeah, though, um, it's trying to reconnect. Oh, you're here. You're back. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So, yes, continue. Uh, okay. So, yeah. So, you had to figure out what triggers your triggers. And your sole responsibility is to articulate that to be aware of that and be able to process when you are triggered and control that, right? But you don't subject yourself to being triggered. And that's where that boundary comes into play. That this is a hard wall. So we're not, <laughs> you can't get past this wall because that puts me in a place where I know and I'm aware that's not productive to me. And sometimes I'm speaking for myself. I had to learn this. I felt that my triggers of being abused mm -hmm. was like my problem. And you know, some people be like, well, that's your past. That's not my issue. Well, are you in my circle? Right. Are you close to me? Do you value me? Do you love me? So if this is something that I struggled with my whole childhood and this specific behavior triggers this and I'm working really hard. I'm letting you know, I'm telling you, I just don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Your responsibility is to acknowledge that boundary for me and right. to respect that. At that point, my sole responsibility was to tell you to address it, to try to work on it. Right. How are you gonna, how do you want me to work on something if you saying get over it or we're gonna do it anyways? That's your problem. Exactly, what is up with that? Yeah, it's ridiculous. That, see, that'll get someone blocked and cut off real quick. <laughs> Just and that's, you know, I'm, I'm probably might get a little hate for this, but I absolutely hate the Will and Jada example of I'm not responsible for your happiness. If you're my partner, if you're my best friend, if you're somebody that's in my personal world, you have a sense of responsibility of helping me cultivate a happy, loving relationship. Mm. Relationships take the two parties, right? right? So though you're not responsible for the full concept of happiness, mm -hmm. there's a sense of responsibility when we go into that union together right. to cultivate something healthy. Mm. because vulnerability is real people die out of love right people hurt literally feel like they're falling apart mm. because of love of love because of grief that concept say of that again because it's what huh you said say that again you said because it's what people people die and literally are in physical pain because of love and grief because Preach. it is in rooted in our soul and our heart exactly. it's a part of our actual needs as much as we don't want to say it it right. is right so it's it's a easy get out of jail car to be like that's not my problem you're right. in charge of your own happiness mm -hmm. no i completely agree no you bet you you preach you preached yeah because something that i thought of um i'm like you know Yes, I can definitely be happy, but like the significant other can add on to that happiness. You know, like, I honestly, I'm just listening here. I don't know what to say, honestly. You're just coming with the wisdom and I'm just, honestly, I'm just here listening. I don't know what to say. I'm just here listening. I'm going to go back after this is recorded and I'm going to listen to it because I can do that. I get the early access, duh, because like, I'm the host. So it's just like, yeah, right now this episode is recording on Friday, May 26th. Um, and so by the time this episode is released, it'll probably be a month from now. But I get to listen to it as, and I will be <laughs> listening to it as much as possible because I'm getting the wisdom here. And I was like, haha, I get early release. I get to. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm so glad you're on season three because listen, season three. It, it's on a whole different level. Ooh. It's literally on a whole different level. Like, I'm really That's excited that. for this season. You know, you, you definitely, 
you definitely are season three and season four vibes. Because I ain't thought about season five. I, I'm just not. It's just that's in the <laughs> it's future. Okay. That's too it's far okay. in the future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, also because I know um, I want you and your um, uh, your the friend that um, does count that has the practice. Yeah, my partner. The counseling mm-hmm. practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, um, you're you know the co-founder of the nonprofit with you. Um, okay, so definitely want y'all on, but I'm thinking um, y'all be the season premiere for season four. Ooh, Ooh. we would love that. Like, like we can record, you know, now, you know, but it's just like, it probably will be released. See, that's the thing. I'm thinking doing maybe season four, um, in August, or I'm thinking of maybe just splitting up season three um, and doing and making it season three, season four. That way it'll all come out closer to each other rather than having to wait like a month and a half for mm-hmm. season four to come out. Because I don't want to wait. Let's be honest. I don't got time to be waiting. I just don't. I don't want to wait. <laughs> we all need it. We need to be poured into every day, you know? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm just like, I think that that's how that's going to go um but i guess what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep the the aesthetic the same though and by that i mean like how the flyers look um because usually like i change the look every season yeah you know what I mean? to symbolize oh something new new season mm-hmm. but um I'm pretty pleased with the flyer that I have made. Yes, yeah, it so looks cute. so much better than season one and season two's flyers. It's no, just, I love it. Yes, the color is perfect. It's just, it's just amazing. Um, but yes, so so let's okay. Freedom from self bondage. Freedom from the bondage of self. Preach. <laughs> Okay. Preach. <laughs> I'm just listening. So that resonates with me a lot um, because I was trapped by my own thoughts, my own emotions, my desire to have a peaceful, har- harmonious um, community, family, all of that. These expectations that mm. I just wanted so bad um, as a child, you know, right. and I grew up just, just feeling like I had this void and then I attracted very toxic relationships mm-hmm. abusive relationships um sorry cut out can you say that again you said toxic relationships and what abusive relationships mm, yeah and um you know my self-worth wasn't mm-hmm. there um and I believe in the law of attraction yeah yeah it's real Period. It's, it's real. real. So you that bondage that you put on you, you're going to attract that. So when I hear people say, ugh, dating sucks. Wait, you said the bondage that you put on you, you're going to attract that? Yes. You're coming with the wisdom. <laughs> Seriously, that is... Ooh, sorry, continue. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... You know, if you're a person that says, oh, why do I attract the same person? And if it's the same person and different people, mm-hmm. there's only one common denominator and it's you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's in your friendships. That's in your workplace. Mm-hmm. Your bondage will dictate the path that you go, mm-hmm. period. Right. Um, but when you find your voice, when you acknowledge who you are, when you establish those walls, those boundaries, your level of respect that people will have for you. Mm-hmm. You might feel lonely, I'm not gonna lie. Right, I, the lonely is part of that process. It And, and it's not just the process mm-hmm. is, there's not a lot of people who understand s- true self-confidence, right. self-identity. It's yeah. scary. Some people will look at you and be like, excuse my French, ooh, she's a bitch. Listen, this is vulnerability time. We say <laughs> everything and anything. Ooh, she's too strong. Right. Ooh, she thinks she's better, or he. Mm-hmm. But it's because it's uncomfortable. Right. 
it irritates their insecurities. It irritates insecurities. Confidence can irritate insecurities. I've been on both ends. Same. Yeah. And also Same. that is something really interesting. Um, that is a potential um, episode. Um, sorry, I don't know how, how a gnat got in my room and it's just bothering me. <laughs> no, there's one flying around mine right now too. And I'm like, you little jerk. Yeah, right? Luckily, because of my ADHD, I have learned to also be able to somewhat focus while I'm also distracted. We love it. Took years to learn. <laughs> um, that is also a potential episode in the future. Um, I'm sure you saw it in my discussion uh, list that I sent you. Um, you know, same person, different body. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's playing ex like perfectly, it's a perfect segue to what you just said, you know. Um, well, it's the same concept, right? Yeah. I feel like I recently, well, I guess technically I'm still going through a divorce, um, but I was in therapy for many years, even before I filed for the divorce. Mm -hmm. um, but so I'm going to say this quick, quick little oh, go ahead. This is highlight yours, so. is. Um, therapy in our in our work takes time and it may feel like it's not doing anything for you that it's just redundant why am I here but if you commit and show up every single time regardless if you feel like you're not getting anything out of it I promise you you will have an aha moment I have always been very um, introspective um, hyper aware of personal development just because right. that's all I've been exposed to in my career. Right. right. So sometimes going to therapy for me was like, duh, you know, and it was one day my counselor said something to me. Didn't hit me then. Did not hit me. Mm -hmm. A few days later, somehow I just started crying in my car. Right. Right. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> Yes. Like, where did this come from? And I had a breakthrough. So yeah. the concept is when you feed that inner spirit, and you keep feeding it, you keep feeding it, eventually it would be free. The paradigm will change. It takes time. It's years of undoing, right? Right. But when I accepted why I was attracting these relationships, why I was doing what I was doing, it was like, oh shit, that's wild. Another thing she said to me was, Dominique, you can empathize, you can have compassion, but you don't have to tolerate. Ooh. So that's how I live now, is that I hear you and that is true for you. I understand why you behave that way. Right. But I don't have to accept it into my role to make me feel uncomfortable. Right. And sometimes Ooh. we decide that because I understand your background, it gives you a pass. I'm writing that down. <laughs> it doesn't give you a pass. It doesn't. I can empathize with you, but I don't have to accept it into my world. Right? Wow. So anyways, I'm now people look at Dominique. I I just did like the um, Myers-Briggs. And Same. before all of this, I am, I was a campaigner, right? Like, mm -hmm. ooh, advocate for everybody. Like, yes, let's come together, you know, ooh, do, ooh, whatever. You wanna know what I am now? What? Are you familiar with the personality types? Oh yeah, I just took an, I'm an INFJ-T. Okay, what do you think I am now? Advocate? Nope. Girl, I don't know. Commander. If you would have told me I would have became an, a commander, I would be like, I know you lying. Right, right. Ill, they're dictators, they're mean, they're because I was I was blocked by my own biases and my own projection of what a leader looks like. They were, mm. they were mean, they were this, they were all of that. Right. But the change was I know my worth now. I'm self aware yes. and I'm not backing down. But it doesn't mean I'm not loving. It doesn't mean that I don't have my nurturing spirit. Right. So 
the people who met me after my divorce see the commander. Right. The people who know me prior to my divorce has seen me as a campaigner, the emotional person. Right. And reality is it's growth. Right. Right. Yeah. I am the same person in the inside. However, I have grown to have this confidence that right. I can take charge of my life. Yeah. So. Wow. You get... Thank you. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, I noticed too, like, <clears throat> in my healing journey, you know, like, my personality changed. Mm-hmm. You know, um, my growth and just, you know, healing and personal development and self-awareness, self-acknowledgement yeah. as well. Because acknowledge is also power. It's got to start somewhere. We got to acknowledge. You can't spell acknowledge without knowledge. So it's just right. like acknowledge is also power. Um, yeah. And I'm just like. I know I'm still learning my worth, but I know what I'm not worth. Okay. Right. And that's important. Right. That's a good start, right? Yeah. What? And that goes down to like, what's your map? How do you process that? Right. Right. It's acknowledging, have a journal like, ooh, this yeah. gave me a feeling that I don't like. It's like dating, right? When I became single again, I went on dates, mm -hmm. not saying, oh, maybe this is going to be the one. It's gonna be like, what am I gonna learn? What's gonna make me yes. uncomfortable here? What do I like? Ooh, like I had one guy, I never thought I would like this, but he would be like, oh, did you see something in the menu you like? And I'll be like, yeah, I do actually. I'm torn between the salmon and the steak. Okay, tell you what, the salmon sounds really, really good. Let's order that for you. And would order it for me. I think I'm turned on. I don't, I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. I know that's right. We love a gentleman now. We love a chivalrous okay. gentleman. Okay. Listen. But first, when I didn't have, like, when I was in protection mode, right? Yeah. It's like, how are you going to tell me I'm going to eat the salmon? Right, right. Right. But the hill Dominic is like, did you just make my decision easier? Did you just, right. like, say these two yeah. make you happy? And I think this sounds really good. Let's just try this one out. And I don't, I didn't have to stress. I didn't have to worry. Yeah. So now I realize I like a man that will ask what I think, what I want, yeah. and will make it happen. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with there's that. Nothing, but there's some people who would not like that, right? Right. But just being able to ask yourself and be open to learning. Not everything has to come with a background. Just because you go on a date doesn't mean this is your person. But I promise you, if you have a mindset of learning about yourself, yeah, you will gain so much. This is why you are a co-founder of a nonprofit. You know, this is why you have all these credentials because you come with the wisdom, you come with the maturity, and you come with the awareness you definitely have that, I don't know, you definitely give off leadership mentality and that is so needed. You know what I mean? That is so needed. And the way you, you, you present it, it's just wrapped up in just graceful. It's just a oh, very graceful, yeah. you know, presentation. It's not a push, it is a present. And you definitely present with it so gracefully, you know, and- Thank you. Yeah, I mean, so I just, I think I've decided um, that you and um, your friend. Brandy will... Mount. Hmm. Her name is Brandy Mount. Say that again. Brandy, her name is Brandy. Brandy, that Dominique and Brandy will be season four premiere. Ooh, I'm excited. Like your episode is coming out this season, but mm -hmm. y'all's together will be the season four premiere <laughs> well we're excited about that she i mean she's awesome like i said she's um she was a school counselor mm -hmm. she's been in the mental health field for about 20 years um she was a teacher then a counselor and then now she owns her own practice uh, she serves uh the vet veteran community she focuses Ooh, on interracial finally someone does 
Yeah. And first of all, for folks who don't know what practice is, owning their own practice, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So we, um, <clears throat> I work with her. She has her own um, mental health private practice. We provide uh, mental health services to those in need. Um, our niche is, of course, just crisis, right? Trauma work, mm -hmm. um, veteran work. Um, she really loves teaching um, about interracial adoption. Mm -hmm. um, which I think is you don't really hear about as a I mental health I never heard about thing. that until a week ago when you told me. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword, right? You're, you're dealing with the parents that are adopting from outside of their ethnicity, their culture. Um, and then you're dealing with a child coming in to a completely different culture that they're not used to. How do you navigate that space? And what does that do to identity for that child? Um, so we navigate those places. Um, we have... Uh, of course, like depression, anxiety, cultural PTSD, everything that you can think of. Uh, we have about 30 um, uh, licensed practitioners underneath us so that offer a variety of services. So it's called Alliance Counseling Works. Um, it's, it is based in Austin, but we have telehealth as well. And then we um, are doing, you know, we have affordable um, feels me out like affordable uh, mental health services for y'all. Yes, affordable mental mm -hmm. health services. See, that's what I'm saying because I it just blows my mind. You know, mental health is a priority, not a privilege. Okay. You know, you know, but for the like, first time ever, we have it being a priority, not a privilege. Right. Because I mean, we we see the end results of mental health neglect in society you know we, we see it and i'm just like you know we gotta you know, i was just like y'all tired of seeing it now we gotta do something about it because guess what it could be you on the on the other end you know experiencing the actions of mental health neglect mm -hmm. you know what i mean um for example like for people who I'm just gonna go right into it, you know, like for example, like uh, like mass shootings a lot of the time, you know, I'm just like, if there has been treatment and intervention, if there had been treatment and intervention beforehand, you know, would this situation have even occurred? You know what you I mean? Know, it's funny that you say that. So part of our business model will be addressing that. We actually just had a meeting with our grant writer um, mm -hmm. about that. So. The, the issue is um, you've been to college and so you go to college and it's final week. What does your college do for you when it's finals week? Mm -hmm. Like what kind of activities? Did you ever do activities in your college? Yeah, they would have um, um, they would have uh, animal day. Like they would, you know, let you play with pets and sometimes they would bring a petting zoo. Mm -hmm. Um they call it emotional support animal day. There you go. Yeah. Um, and then also petting zoo. They did a. They did some. Uh, they did some things. I think they'll bring in masseuse. They would bring in meditation. Mm -hmm. They would bring in calming tools. And if as adults we need that, why aren't we providing those safe places in our schools? Right. Why aren't we having self care days being integrated inside of K twelve? Exactly. Exactly. Because their test anxiety is even higher. Right. They don't get it. They're trying to process all of their emotions. Right. So why aren't we doing that? Right. What about that kid that needs to just like decompress? Right. Yeah, exactly. And it's so, just like, how, how many people got to suffer? How many people got to die? How many people got to be mm -hmm. harmed for you know people really get it like i mean i still see in the news when they're just like you know oh mental health is not an excuse for this this is it. i'm just like little, little no it, you're right it's not an excuse but it is a reality you know what i mean that this was you know that there could be a direct correlation from person to action you know there could be a direct correlation you know, it is better to address that beforehand than not address that beforehand. Because just like you want to take that chance, <laughs> just like you want to take that chance. Right. 
And I, it, it, it honestly irks me when people be like, oh, you're giving them a path for mental health. No, actually, if you look at the psychology behind mental health, it's a chemical imbalances that prevents you from thinking rationally and logically. Mm-hmm. And so um, intervention and preventative measures are everything, but sometimes you can't predict them. But you could put in um, better interventions better preventative measures to yeah. ensure that does that there's a easier it makes it more difficult for those hard decisions to mm-hmm. to happen but it doesn't mean those thoughts aren't going to be there it doesn't mean that the effort is not going to be there it's just going to be very very hard for accessibility right that's the key is preventing accessibility right, right. but reality is mental health is real exactly like diet manic episodes bipolar um hallucinations all of that happens and creates seeing ghosts having a a perspective that this is happening when it's really not happening that is real and believe it or not it may seem odd to us and no way you can control that but you can't and society acknowledges mental health and they don't even realize it because they you know when mental health is good and happy you're like oh i'm so happy today oh i'm just so at peace and i was like you're acknowledging mental health but you don't want to acknowledge the other side of it and that's also the thing that you said you know um it's yes definitely a chemical imbalance there's also you know parts of the brain the prefrontal cortex the amygdala right. the hippocampus the white matter the gray matter you know in the brain just to name a few um trauma you know can mis can um corrupt your brain you know what i mean yes there can be healing you know um there can you know there can be healing i'm not going to get all into it but um there are parts of the brain that people don't have fully developed or they don't have at all because i've been damaged yes exactly and it's just like everything like majority of what humans do starts in our mind our mind is a huge battlefield and I'm just like, you know, we need to focus on the root, you know, as well as the um, external reality. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause I'm like, okay, but where are these actions coming from? All of our actions are doing, like I'm able to clap my hands because my brain is Function. able to, mm-hmm. exactly. And so I'm just like, I, I just, I, I'm not gonna get too into it because I don't know, like right now, I'm just not in the, I'm not in the best graceful, peaceful place right now mm-hmm. to get into it because I, like when you had said, um, when people say you're just giving them a pass, oh my gosh, that frustrated me so much because mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh my gosh, yes, I have heard that by um, people who, you know, and I'm not bashing them, but by people, you know, who don't know about psychology, you know, who haven't done their research, who haven't done their studies, you know what I mean? Who just are, cause I mean, we're taught that as if, you know, we're conditioned to only see the mugshot. We aren't conditioned to see, oh, maybe there's a reality behind this mugshot. Maybe mm-hmm. not everything's so black and white. Maybe things are so complex. You know what I mean? Maybe there's more to the story, you know? So, I don't know, but it's just like you and I, you know, having a lot of knowledge in just the mental health field and how the brain works, you know, though we don't know it all, but you know, we do know a lot because, you know, we have done our due diligence. Right. We still do our due diligence. You know what I mean? Um, I used to be- I do, I do want to say that that person-centered mentality and for those who don't know that it's it's being able to understand that these qualities that you may struggle with these characteristics let's say that you you struggle with do not do not um they're not your identity right and the quicker that we can accept that it's a struggle yes it's just something that's presenting itself it doesn't make you less than a person. It doesn't make you a bad person, right. a non-functioning person. We ourselves create that barrier. Right. We are our worst own critic. Right. And the dilemma is, 
if somebody is saying this is this, this is happening, of course, get multiple opinions. If, but if you're feeling something, if you're experiencing things that don't feel good or not healthy for yourself, right. give yourself grace. You just may need help and we all need help. For instance, I have um, endometriosis and that's a, a hormonal condition where like I get sick. I throw up. I feel like I have depression. I don't want to get out of bed. I have insomnia. Um, and I thought I started medication. And I was like, I've been on it for like two years. I don't need it no more. I could do it. As soon as I got off the medication, my body like went back to attacking itself. Yeah. And so being able to accept that there's tools out there to help us be better. And it does not make us less of a human right. to utilize medication, to utilize tools, services, people right. that can help us become our best selves because all of us are imperfect, right? So I say that to say these characteristics that are presenting do not are not part of your identity and there's no shame behind it. Right. The shame comes when you don't do nothing about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not an excuse to continue behaving the way that you do, because the sooner you accept it, the sooner you could do something about it. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some cases where it's hard to accept it, and I get that. Mm -hmm. Right. But challenge yourself. Right. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for being on and sharing your wisdom, because that's capital letters <laughs> capital letters seriously um i'm definitely gonna go as soon as we get off this call i'm definitely gonna go back and you know re-listen to it um because yeah i definitely want to and need to like rehear some things and learn you know um and be able to like you know like fully focus you know because sometimes like i need to hear things multiple times to get yeah you know the best that i can out of it mm-hmm so um i'm gonna do that um but with that being said folks we want to thank dominique for coming on she will be back she will definitely be back for season four um if no one has told y'all today that you are loved please allow me to be the first and allow yourself to be the second you were loved folks and you've overcame 100% of your bad days. Why? Because you are still breathing. Winning is an action more than it is a feeling. If you don't feel like a winner, guess what? You're still here, so you are a winner. It just don't feel like it and don't feel good. But um, your action says winner. Even if all you did today was get out of bed and brush your teeth. You know, sometimes the best that you can do can look so little and if it's the best you can do then that's that's more than enough proud of you folks uh oh yes remember to follow this podcast um remember to share this with someone you just never know who's gonna need it save a life um encourage someone's day and i will see y'all next episode Hey there, if you liked this episode, go ahead and buy my book on Amazon. What the book is called, type it on Amazon. It is spoken by Trenton Epizon. Epizon is spelled E-P-I-Z-O-N. I really would appreciate the support. Give it a review, give it a buy, give it a try. And I promise you, you will not be upset at it. It is a poetry book. It is a very easy, quick read. And it definitely um, will give you some healing and some insight and some wisdom um, on abuse, mental health, recovery, um, the tragedy to triumph. You will love it. Give it a buy. Give it a try. And recommend the book and this episode 
with others, go ahead and give this episode, I mean, this podcast a follow and share it with others. You could be the reason that someone is alive tomorrow because you decided to share this episode today. This podcast is about saving lives, healing ourselves and others, and encouraging others and ourselves as well. Thank y'all so much for the support. Love y'all. I life y'all. I will see y'all next episode. You are valuable. You are beautiful. You are still on this earth because you have the strength. Thank you. Bye, folks.